Hi, I'm Cleone Casti, and welcome to the Quintessential Rider Dressage Roundtable without the table. Uh, we have Zoom guests and we have guests with us here today, all top dressage coaches and also a top dressage judge with us. We've got Niall and Yako on Zoom, uh, Siobhan, Debbie and Andrea with us in person. And we're going to be discussing exactly how and what they're going to be bringing to the platform of the Quintessential Rider with their unbelievable expertise in dressage. So I'm not going to tell you any more about them because frankly I think it's a lot more interesting they talk about themselves. Who wants to start? Oh, come on. Siobhan, you're up. Hi, I'm Siobhan Records. I am an open dressage rider as well as an aquasa coach. I have a vast array of clients ranging from just starting on young green horses through to the advanced levels. I also compete a vast range of horses from prelim through to medium tour. And you're going to be bringing as everyone is from prelim to Grand Prix. So I'm going to be focusing a lot in this initial round of filming on warming up younger horses, what to do, why we do it and how to stay safe doing it. So Debbie, uh, can you tell us a bit about your background because you are one of our unique panel here being a judge. Hi, I'm Debbie van Veek. I am a National A Dressage Judge and a British Horse Society trained instructor and I specialise in dressage. I judge all levels from prelim right up to Grand Prix and have done for quite a few years. I also have students that range from happy hackers right up to medium tour riders. Um, teaching everybody, any level, anybody who's interested in learning, I'm interested in teaching. And I'm going to bring a little bit of a judging tilt to the videos that we're going to do. And I will do a little bit of coaching, but I'm going to be more of the final product in the arena writing your tests. And how long would it take someone to get to a test point if they were going to start from scratch? Um, I would say probably about a year. Um, and then it depends how, how quickly you progress to move up the different levels. You know, it depends on you, your horse, how much time and effort you're willing to put into it, how much money you're willing to spend on lessons. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it varies. You've, you've got to know when you're ready and you've got to be guided by your coach as to when you're yeah. ready to go up to the levels. There's no point in going up a level and making a complete mess of it. I imagine it would be very devastating and have setbacks and yeah. not good for confidence for you or the horse. It is. It's very despondent for the riders and um, yeah, and it's much nicer to go in there and think at least you've got a, you've got a chance of getting in the tickets and getting placed. Andrea. Yes. yes. <laughs> Okay, um, my name is Andrea Harrison. I am a, a Grand Prix dressage rider as well as a coach throughout all the levels. Um, I'm really looking forward to trying to help people gain as much knowledge as possible and with a correct understanding of how to put it together through the levels um, with a fantastic team that we have on board here. Uh, it's going to be a great venture. I'm part of the International Coaches Club as well. Um, unfortunately this year we are not able to travel so hopefully next year that will, will be part of it um, and we can go and learn some more so we can share our knowledge. Niall and Yaku on Zoom, welcome, thank you for joining us. Uh, who's going to dive in first? Niall, you're going to dive in first. <laughs> I'm going to start. Well, um, well, my name is Niall Quirk. Um, I am Irish. Um, I live, I've been living in the USA for the last five years. I was trained in Germany by Konrad Schumacher um, for on and off for six years. Um, I am brought up on the, the German system, the, the use of the training scale, um, which is very much directed toward competition. And um, this particular system is very successful as we've seen internationally in the arena. Um, I came to South Africa about um, 11 years ago now and I started coaching and I've been back and forth all the, all the time and I'm here, <laughs> I'm practically a resident now because I've been here six months um, because of COVID-19. Um, but I have taught 
uh, jumpers, flat work. I've done a huge amount of work um, with jumpers. And I have, uh, in England, I have given the British Horse Society Convention on flat work for jumping. And I've also given the British Show Jumping Convention on flat work for jumping. So I feel I've got a, a broad knowledge, not just dressage, but also the importance of flat work across all disciplines. Um, I say flat work because most jumpers, when you say dressage, run for cover. <laughs> and so if you don't mention the word dressage, and you actually help them to get around the course better in a better way. They're all for it. Oh, I'm wounded. Um, <laughs> so, so you're going to be bringing that aspect as well to the dressage platform is a, a flat work platform for show jumpers and, and other riders? I would love to, yes. And, and also... Um, I have done a huge amount of, I've been in the, in, in Ireland, we developed a coaching structure about um, nearly 20 years ago now. And I was on the initial group that, that developed it. And it, this coaching structure was subsequently sold to the FEI, which the FEI now uses, which is the, the structure that we put in place. So my, my real, I think my real joy is helping coaches coach better. I think I, it's my, I think it's my forte probably. And I'm hoping to bring how to coach co coaches, really. How to improve coaching, how to make coaches better, how to make them more confident. Um, and I feel that a lot of people, when we're teaching every day, I'm sure the girls will agree, when you teach every day, you get a little bit stale. And it's just wonderful to have a course for coaches that actually gives them, it's a bit like a shower, you're refreshed, you've got some new ideas, you've got, you know, you've got a whole new, new way. Um, and I, I really like doing that. So I'm hoping I'm going to do that on this platform. And so are we. <laughs> Yaku, welcome. It's great to have you finally. Sorry, sorry you're going last. <laughs> Yeah, I'm very excited about this uh, program, the platform, the quintessential rider. Now, I'm a competitive dressage rider. I've got my national colors in dressage. Um, and later on, I also became a coach and coach developer. So I'm also very passionate about coaching. Um, I've had very successful athletes that I helped um, even as recent as the past uh, youth championships in 2019. And then on top of that, during this COVID lockdown, um, I started with online webinar series for coaches from any discipline. So now I understand that with these changing times, um, technology is now a wonderful tool and that could be used to really reach everyone. So although I hail from the rural areas of the Northern Cape and for the past 70 odd years, um, I had obviously limited uh, direct access from coaches for my own riding. So I had to travel vast distances and often overseas to get educated in dressage and you know, horsemanship. And um, I benefited most from coaches who could explain in a clear and systematic way and typical this German training, uh, the German system of the, uh, of the training scales. So I would like to now just bring this knowledge that I got um, to our subscribers and then offer them learning experiences we didn't have before, ever. That sounds fantastic. And I'm just, I'm also surprised actually this hasn't happened before, but I, I guess it takes something major for this kind of change to happen because I'm sure none of us enjoying lockdown particularly. I think one of the fantastic things about this platform is that everyone is coming from a slightly different angle. Um, I imagine, so you, we've discussed using the German scales of training as a, as a benchmark for everyone that's coaching on the platform. Because I, I know from a show jumping side of things that a lot of instructors have different language they use to convey the same thing. I think in, in essence what we're trying to do as a group here is, in, is teach everyone from basics and um, a broad base up to the top with the same idea, the same principles and the same direction guided by the German training scale and the FEI rules. So we're all on the same page and, and hopefully heading in the right direction. So l no confusion, simple, straightforward, easy to understand, fantastic. Um, so, Nile, what is it that specifically structurally wise uh, that you are going to bring to the quintessential rider platform? I think that I have a great, uh, a broad technical knowledge, which I think I can bring in, in, in helping people. 
And I think the fact that I've worked with different sports with flat work, dressage, whatever you want to call it, um, I think there's a marriage there definitely. And I'm very excited about that. I'm very excited about coaching coaches. And um, I really feel there is a big opening in the world, not just South Africa, for help for coaches um, to improve, to validate their knowledge. Um, and I think it's wonderful that it's coming from South Africa. And I, I think it's quite exciting. Well, I find it quite exciting that, I find it very exciting that you will be doing flat work as well for jumpers. And I would imagine that coaches, jumping coaches could also benefit from this. Hugely. And I think that there will be a whole program on flat work for jumping. I really do. Um, involved with the jumpers, not in a separate entity, but working with jumpers and talking about their needs and what we have to do to help them within their needs. I think one of the exciting things that for me, which I don't think any of us have mentioned, is that um, the thing that's really struck me about the quintessential rider is the quality of the of the filming, um, and it's it's fantastic. And I think put together the knowledge that, that the group has, and then we go forward with that with this quality. I think it's really exciting. And just off the cuff, because I, I know a lot of people will be watching this from across the disciplines, what would you say the major difference, well obviously, no I'm not going to say obviously because I'm asking a question, what is the difference, sure you don't use the term dressage if you're not going to scare off show jumpers or jumpers, what is the main difference between teaching novice and intermediate flat work dressage for jumpers as opposed to dressage riders? What, do, would you approach it differently? Would they be do, would they be doing less lateral work, or what would be the difference? The the, the the normal thing is that they're usually very good riders, primarily, and so you're just adding skills to the riding. Um, so there's they run with them because they can um, they can pick up the skill very easily. They they get an effect instantly usually and then they go wow this can really help me in the ring i can turn better which means i'm going to have a better time or a better balance i can control the horse without pulling its head which is then limiting the hind leg so sometimes you have to kind of inform them as well as add the skill on but they they're very responsive to it and the younger riders internationally are all very good flat worker flat work riders so you would say there's um, not that much difference then between the novice and intermediate flat work and dressage riders, jumpers, dressage? Well, they, they usually people, a lot of people come to dressage um, because they feel they want to do it. So they have to learn to ride and then become a dressage rider. Whereas jumpers tend to be quite good riders because if you're jumping around a meter 20, a meter 30, I'm talking about that sort of level, you can ride. You know, I mean... And um, so that's the disadvantage a lot of the time for the girls. I'd love to hear your point of view is that you're starting with somebody who has to learn how to balance, first of all. Whereas these guys can balance, and if you refine their balance, they get massive effects. That does make a lot of sense. Does anyone want to jump in on that? I, I'd just like to say, I'm, I'm actually teaching a couple of show jumpers at the moment. And the one girl in particular, she came to me about two and a half years ago. Um, Niall, you also teach her as well, um, and she comes from a jumping, strong jumping background, and she came into dressage, and she's found now her horse is jumping a lot better, her horse is a lot stronger, um, more agile, as, as Niall said, you know, easier to turn the corners and what have you. So in the two and a half years of dressage, the horse has really built up, gotten stronger, more powerful, um, more supple and a bit more agile. So it definitely is, I find it beneficial for show jumpers, the, the jumpers I teach. And your program when you're teaching, is it any different to the dressage riders? It's Obviously the saddle's different, we know that one. It's <laughs> <The saddle's different. laughs> <laughs> just as expensive, but the mm -hmm. saddle's different. Yep. Um, it's not really, it's probably a little less, less involved than the dressage rider. You know, the, when you say involved. involved. It's not quite as in depth or as polished as you know so a show jumper's leg yield you would expect i wouldn't expect them to do it as well as a 
as you say, an intermediate dress. So you're saying as prettily. So you want the effect, yeah. but maybe not quite as pretty. Yes, it doesn't have to be as pretty. So, and it's also, I think, I don't know if Niall finds the same thing, but to keep the show jumpers attention oh. is, <laughs> is quite interesting at times <laughs> to keep them focused. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> You know, they get a little bit bored, but well, I find they get a little bit bored with things quicker than the dressage rider. You know, the dressage rider is more inclined to go over the leg yield 50 times, whereas the jumper will do it three or four times. Like, no, enough of this. Moving on. <laughs> Fair enough. Yaku, on Zoom, <laughs> um, what are you going to be bringing to the platform in terms of the structure of, of what you'll be teaching? Well, um, being this online platform for, for subscribers, it's actually wonderful to have a, a data bank of videos that people can come back on. And the experience that I can then bring to them is um, to uh, many of these often difficult and misunderstood concepts of dressage, that we can bring some clear explanations on it based on classical theory and the principles, um, but that it's delivered by professionals like us with vast experience and then with the help of high quality audiovisual technology. Yeah, I think the archives are going to be a very strong uh, pulling point and a very strong teaching tool as well. I think that's going to be important if someone catches, say, your lessons part way through and goes, okay, I decide I want to, for example, leg yield, or like, they'll be able to go in and see the way that all of you approach that, which I think is going to be great. Siobhan. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the thing that I'm really excited about this is for a lot of our local riders that we get to show South African bred horses doing the movements. So it's also, I think, so much more relatable than a lot of the stuff we see coming out of Europe. It relates it's into our market. Little, yeah. That's it. And it relates into our market and showing people that with the correct training and the correct foundation, they can take any horse up the grades and compete it successfully. I think it's important because a lot of people, you know, you want to, not everyone's got a lot of money to spend. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't. A lot of people don't have a lot of money to spend on a super duper made horse. Uh, so, you know, you've got to go out there and find a horse that is suitable for the discipline that you want. And then to have the correct training and teaching to be able to get the horse to that point. If you were looking for a horse, a dressage horse, a young horse, what would you, what would you look for in a horse? So for me, my, my main two things is the walk and the canter and trainability. With trainability, you can teach them anything. That, that's the fundamental. The trot, you can definitely, definitely create. Um, my own Rathmore Capri is a huge example of that. It trotted like a sewing machine up until medium. It was awful to sit to. <laughs> but as he's progressed and as he's learned a bit of the Piaf and the Passage, he's created a second trot that you'd watch him trot around ordinarily. Um, I think my favorite comment was from one of our higher dressage judges, not you, Debbie, <laughs> that she said she was really sad when I brought him out in novice that that was all I could afford. Excuse me, what? Because he lacked so much in quality. So he's now competing medium to really successfully. Well, so. that's an <laughs> incredible feeling as well for both you and yours. And fingers crossed, Grand Prix next year. Which is great, having started him, I, I back all my own horses, all my young horses, I back myself. Um, so to produce them up like that is really, and all their faults are mine, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Andrea? Yeah, so I've um, been fortunate enough to have been trained in Germany for a number of years. And I'd like to bring that knowledge through to here. I train also, um, I travel to Botswana and Zambia and teach over there. So it's nice to bring not only South Africa, but Africa as a whole. And like this platform is enabling all of us to, to get to people which we wouldn't normally get to. And if I can teach someone who didn't know how to do a correct rising trot or a correct simple, getting the horse to stretch down and forward with the correct knowledge and an easy explanation, then I think I've achieved a lot because there's a lot of people that just can't do that. And it starts with something simple like that. And then the building blocks. And like Yaku said, if, if we all have the knowledge and if we impart it with it correctly to the people who understand it, you know, it's not just shouting at them and telling them, and this is where you need to go, and this is what we're gonna do. And they come away from the lesson going, 
well, I think that was great, but what actually did I learn? Now we need to actually get to the point where you can go back, you can watch it. Okay, now I see. That was incorrect, this is correct, and we can go forward. And what's wonderful about the cameras and the and angles that you're going to be getting is that we can show it all from diverse angles and say, okay, this is a good angle for a shoulder. Obviously, later on, this is a little bit too much or this is not enough. Um, and I think that is, it's something that is unheard of from my knowledge in, in, in training so far as a platform or anything online. And I'm super thrilled to be part of it. Andre, you, that was brilliant what you said, because I think it's getting there and providing a pathway for these people. Because a lot of people look at Siobhan, who's now riding around at Medium Tour. How did she get there? She can, we are going to provide a service that's going to show you how to get there in, in you know, little increments that we're going to add together. And you can go back and watch this video. You can go back forward to watch that video. But you're always, you've always got this reference of this pathway which we're creating. Otherwise, it's an individual video of Siobhan, an individual video of me, an individual video of Debbie. And, and, and it's, we can look at that on YouTube. Whereas this is a pathway. I'm, I've robbed the, the British, that's what they call it, their, their pathways. All of their different strands of their training is now called pathways. But I think it's a wonderful thing because you walk up a pathway. Yes, Nal, I agree with you there. Um, yeah, at the quintessential rider, we will be concentrating on the correct way of going based on the German scales of training which will allow horses and their riders to systematically develop from the bottom up into beautiful, harmonious athletes, everything we want in the dressage horse. We want the horses to understand what their riders ask of them. And um, we've got to remember as as coaches and, and even the riders, we remain the custodians of the horse and we have to take care that these horses are trained without undue force, irrational or consistent punishment or excessive use of the aids. I mean, there are so many systems out there that kind of get the results, but at what cost? Whereas what we want to bring here is that um, the, the coaches here in this platform are all taking, talking the same language and that the pathway that we create and give to the subscribers, they can come back and revisit and revisit and, build and grow with us um, from, the, from a broad base to the top at the higher levels. Yeah, Yoko, I think that's a, a very good point that you're making because it's, I think it's quite easy to bully a horse and, um, you know, you're not going to get the best out of a horse by bullying it for a start. Um, and you do want it to be a good experience for both yourself and your horse so that you both give your best and you can both enjoy it. Uh, and that it is a positive experience for everyone all around. So, yeah, I'm really glad to hear that. It's, uh, it's going to be great. Guys, thank you for joining us. Uh, Yahoo Fari and Na Quirk on Zoom. Uh, Siobhan Records, Debbie Van Veek and Andrew Harrison. And myself, Keone Cassidy. This has been our dressage roundtable without the table. But thank you for joining us. Hi, I'm Matthew Morrison. <laughs> it's like the only line I know. <laughs> was Debbie Van Veek, Andrea Harrison, my s Harrison. <coughs> I can't hear you guys, but anyway. Just keep smiling, Yako. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, um, Niall, um, at the uh, let's start again. <laughs> pathways, pathways. <laughs> <laughs>